Welcome to Module 1 of our online course, Georeferencing in CCH2. This module will describe the theory and practice of georeferencing herbarium specimen records. When an herbarium specimen is collected, the collector usually records where they found the specimen. This information is stored on the specimen label with most of the other collection data. Sometimes the specimen label includes latitude and longitude coordinates, but because specimens have been collected over the past couple hundred years, this is not always the case. As a result, many specimens have location data, but we aren't able to place that specimen's location on a map or use it for other computerized analyses. That's where the process of georeferencing comes in. Georeferencing is assigning a decimal latitude and longitude, along with some estimation of the uncertainty of that assignment, to a given location described by textual information. You can think of it as putting a dot on the map to indicate where that specimen was collected. For example, if we have a specimen label that says Calaveras Reservoir, we'd find Calaveras Reservoir on a map, place a point where that specimen could have reasonably been located, and assign an uncertainty radius that encompasses the region where that specimen could have been located, given the precision of the locality data given on the specimen label. This process can get a little complicated, but we'll explain it more in detail in Module 3. So why do we bother putting points on maps? Knowing exactly where herbarium specimens were collected helps us understand the distributions of plants in time and space, as well as predict how those distributions will be affected by changes in climate and land use. Before we start georeferencing, let's define some terminology. Throughout this course, you may hear or see the word occurrence. For our purposes, you can think of an occurrence as a single herbarium specimen record. A specimen's locality is a textual description of where the specimen was collected. It can also be called the location. Latitude is the distance, usually measured in degrees, north or south of the equator, while longitude is the distance east or west of the prime meridian. Latitude runs north and south, while longitude runs east and west. When we use the words uncertainty or error in this course, we mean an estimation of the confidence we have in our assignment of coordinates to a given locality. Often, we estimate this uncertainty by measuring an error radius around our point, or by drawing an error polygon. In both cases, you can think of the uncertainty as encompassing a region in which we are 95% sure our specimen was collected. We'll describe how to assign error radii in Module 4. Over the past hundred years, there have been several ways that humans have assigned coordinates to the ellipsoid surface of the Earth. Let's look at the most common coordinate systems that you will encounter when georeferencing so that you can identify and enter them correctly. The coordinate system with which you are probably the most familiar is decimal degrees. This is the coordinate system of most GPS applications, including the one in your smartphone. When we are georeferencing, the end goal is a set of coordinates in decimal degrees. The first coordinate is usually the latitude. This is sometimes followed by an N or an S, but sometimes the direction is indicated by a positive or a negative sign. Positive 35 in this case means 35 degrees north of the equator. The second coordinate is usually the longitude. This may be followed by a W or an E, or west or east. Or the direction is indicated by positive or negative signs. Negative 120 means 120 degrees west of the prime meridian. A similar coordinate system is the degrees, minutes, seconds system. The latitude usually comes first and is followed by an N or an S, and the longitude comes second and is followed by a W or an E. Negatives and positives are not used for degrees, minutes, seconds. Although this coordinate system looks a lot like decimal degrees, the minutes, which are followed by a single quote, and seconds, followed by double quotes, indicate slightly different measurements than decimal degrees. For both decimal degrees and degrees, minutes, seconds, you might see some additional information that looks like one of these. This is called the geodetic datum, and it's the reference system that is used to map the surface of the Earth. The most common datum you'll probably find is WGS84. This is the datum currently used by Google Earth, Google Maps, and the georeferencing application we use, Geolocate. Then there are some less familiar coordinate systems, one of which is UTMs. UTM stands for Universal Transverse Mercator, and it is a coordinate system that uses an imaginary rectangular grid placed on the surface of the Earth, divided into 60, 6-degree six longitudinal zones. UTM coordinates will look like this, with a zone either before or after the other numbers. 
which are an easting, indicated by an E, and a northing, indicated by an N. Sometimes the zone has an N or an S after it, but not always. Next, there is the U.S. Public Land Survey System, which can also be called Township Range Section for ease of use. This system divides public lands into sections, which are squares one square mile in area. There are 36 sections per township, six across and six down. The range is the distance east or west of a defined meridian in units of six miles. You don't need to know all the nitty gritty here, but you should be able to identify a township range section coordinate system when you see it. It will look something like this. The township is defined usually by a T followed by a number followed by N or S. Then you might see the range, which is an R followed by a number followed by W or E. Then somewhere you might also see a section indicated SEC or just S or section. That will be a number. You might also see additional information like Northwest 1 fourth, which would indicate that the location is in the northwest quarter of the given section. Thanks for watching this module. Please be sure to take the quiz before moving on to Module 2.